today's skull and bones video is all about the best weapons to use and why. I'm going to go over the best weapons that you should be using, the worst weapons and why you shouldn't use them and why they're not really applicable in any situation. Now, if things do change, if there is a patch or a huge game rebalance, please look towards the description and the pinned comment of this video for updates. Or feel free to ask in the comments, I read every comment. Let's get started. Unlike other YouTubers, I like to start out with the best because I make these videos for a future version of myself that forgets all this stuff. So, the best weapon is the Bombard Cannon, and I'm going to show you why it is the Bombard Cannon. Now, again, these are subject to change, but the Bombard Cannon has an incredibly long range, and it shoots an explosive area of effect bomb that deals tremendous damage, not only to towers, but to enemy ships. It's also one of the easiest weapons to land a hit with. I'm going to shoot uh, just a, you know, some, a couple shots here out into the ocean, and you'll see red, well, it's a little far, but uh, it's actually beyond the, <laughs> uh, the mist wall there almost, but... Uh, you can see, like, I don't have to directly hit the ship, I can just hit near the ship to deal damage. So here we go, and boom, that is a hit. I also hit the weak points on the sides, that hit the mast, and uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, there will be a big red circle where this thing lands. Also, it works great for towers. It's a little awkward to aim upwards, though, but it has a fast reload. It deals tremendous amounts of damage. Uh, especially when you hit the weak point here on the tower, and this specific uh, bombard cannon is a fire bombard, so it catches things on fire, it uh, it has a bigger AoE explosion, and it only gets better from here. But uh, it's a little hard to see, but like, there, see that red circle when I shoot the ground here? It's it's only there for a moment, but this is this allows you to hit enemy players in PvP much easier. Uh, the ammo... You get the best bang for your buck on ammo, alright? Bombard uh, shells, cannonballs, whatever you want to call them. They're not cannonballs, they're bombard balls. And uh, as far as ammo spent goes, you're getting the best bang for your buck. You can you definitely use this while moving, and again, it's very forgiving with the aim. It's so easy to just hit and sink ships. Again, with the fast reload, you don't lose. This is an all-round amazing weapon also. Because it puts a big red circle on the ground, you can see where your aim is off, so you can adjust accordingly. And, uh, yeah, see that big red circle there? I am... <laughs> I swear that that was in the circle, but whatever. Let's, uh, shoot a couple more here. And, yeah, see, the, we're, we're in the circle now. And <laughs> look at that, that ship stood no chance. Now, I am a level 8 ship against level 2 ships, but even in higher level zones, I destroy almost every ship in just a few volleys, and I can do this completely from range. And the best thing... The absolute best thing about the Bombard Cannon, because remember, it shoots this big red circle on, onto the into the water, is that if there's multiple ships grouped up, one of my shots can hit three to four ships all at once. And look at this, like, if there's a bunch of ships crowded around like a little small area, they're all dead. Uh, every other weapon in the game, except for the torpedo, just about, and the mortar, of course, which is an auxiliary weapon, we'll talk about those as well, uh, you know, Everything else doesn't do AoE effect damage. Like, this is a sniper cannon, though, a long cannon. This can only hit one target at a time. This is a demi cannon. It's a shotgun kind of cannon. And yeah, you can hit multiple enemies with it, but you're only dealing half damage if you do. So, we're going to talk about the other weapons now, but the bombard cannon, the final thing, too, is in the beta. This is the cheapest cannon in the game to craft. It is the easiest cannon in the game to craft as well. And uh, let's see if I could try to... Uh, well, find the ingredient. We're just gonna skip ahead and go to town here, and I'll show you the ingredients. But before I show you how to craft it, I do want to mention that around mid-game, two and a half to five hours in, depending on how fast you are, every ship you kill will give you more bombard ammo than you're spending on killing them with. So it is just an infinitely resupplyable ammo source without the need to craft. But I'm gonna show you how to craft not only the cannons, but also the ammo as well. It's really simple. And so we talk to the blacksmith, and he's always got something to say, of course he does, you know, that's just how games work. And uh, you just scroll down to, uh, let's see, top deck weapon, no, it's not top deck, it, yeah it is, okay, so I'm using the enhanced bombard here. And this just takes Iroko planks, which you can get in the first couple hours of the game, bronze ingots, these are so easy to farm and fine jute. And then wood tar is the only kind of iffy one, but the best place that I have found in the game to farm wood tar is, okay, so we're in St. Anne, this is where you start the game after the tutorial, and then you're going to sail southwest all the way down to about here, and uh, here, and 
just kind of around. And th this whole area, like, it's just full of, uh, full of it. So, uh, if we talk to him again, we can actually track, you know, the, the ingredients to craft this if we want. And so if I go to track blueprint, there we go. And then I can open the map once again and show you the icons this time. And, uh... Now, it's going to say that the tar, like, see, there's right here at Fort, Fort Lewis, or Louise, however you say it. But if you just kill the ships around here, they carry it, too. This is just a trade route. Also, like, like here, if you want to do a plundering mission, you can get about two wood tar. If you visit this settlement, you can buy one wood tar per hour. So what you do is you go here, you buy one, you buy one, and then here, you know, uh, th this, is a, this is a little bit harder settlement, I think. No, 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 this one's actually pretty easy. No, no, it's not. That's a level 13. Don't do that one. <laughs> okay, but you can easily plunder this one for two, plunder this one for two, and then you can also buy one from each per hour, and then plundering resets really, really, really quickly. So it's uh, <laughs> it's all around good. Now, for everything else, it's not showing on the map for whatever reason, I guess because I have an abundance of the, the supplies, but uh, the jute, the or not the jute, but, you know, the metal, the fiber and all that stuff, you go here to Ka Mangrove, and then you just uh, go to La Colony. And look, they also sell wood tar even though it's not marked on the map for some reason. I don't know why that is. I guess it's a UI bug. But this is another... This is actually my favorite place to like really farm. I made a whole video about this little zone here uh, in a tutorial. But uh, now the ammo. And then we're going to talk to the blacksmith again. You're a surly company. Alright, so the ammo is uh, right here. And it is the uh, bombard bomb crate. Now, I actually don't have the recipe for it, because I don't need it. I have, like, I get infinite bombard ammo, but, um, I'll go ahead and show you where to get the recipe, and, uh, it's just made by scraps. It's like scrap metal, torn sails, rusty nails. You're, you're gonna get plenty of those every time you, you, uh, break open a shipwreck, but, uh, no, that's not where it's at. That's, that's my own marking, but yeah, it's right up here. You'll be here around level three. You're gonna come to this area around level three-ish, so, uh, we'll go ahead and buy it. <laughs> Just so you can see the ingredients, just so you know I'm not fibbing. And in case they patch it and make the, like, one day they might make the ingredients more expensive. So, for historical purposes sake, we'll go ahead and just catalog this now. And then you just go to buy and sell. And then buy the, the right, it's metal salvage and rusty nails. There's an infinite supply of these. They're so easy to get. Come on, guys. Alright, next weapon. Next up is the highest DPS weapon versus ships. And this is because of its insane damage and its fast reload. And that is the Demi Cannons. So Demi Cannons look like this. You just shoot a big shotgun shrapnel blast right in front of you. It has very limited range, so here I am. I'm pretty far away. And uh, I can't quite hit this ship. But later on, uh, which is not available in the beta, but later on you will be able to increase the range of this. But I don't know why you would want to. Uh, so what you do is, um, the way this game works... And this is like one of the better cannons for just farming ships. You're going to be doing a lot of ship farming. And so you're, you don't aggro the enemies until you're, you attack because you're a pirate. They don't know that you're a bad guy. You sail right up next to them and you just shotgun their weak points. And that usually kills them or wounds them enough to board them giving you bonus loot. You just simply rinse and repeat this. It's one cannonball per kill. Now even if I were to do this to high level ships, it might take a few volleys. But when you're high, high level, you have the best enemy cannons in the game then it's still a one-shot, one-kill on almost every ship that isn't, you know, an elite or a, uh, a rare. Uh, I don't know what they're called in this game, like a ship captain, I suppose. But um, essentially, you, yeah, you just sail around, and if you have, um, you know, them on each side, you could AoE farm, you know, four to five ships really, really quickly. And you just, again, you just shotgun the rate point. Look at how fast the reload is by the time I swoop around. I don't even need to, like, switch, you know, sides to my ship to kill things. I can just blast them down. One to two cannonballs. For killing ships, this is the most efficient weapon in the game. Um, but now, if you're trying to do PvP, you're not really going to have an opportunity to get close to other players because the current meta is to run away and bombard or to snipe sails. If someone snipes your sails and, and they have a guy with demi cans that rolls up on you, you're basically dead unless you have flood protection. Uh, also, the, the downside to this is it's not an all-purpose or all-rounder weapon. And while this does out-DPS the Bombard Cannons we talked about earlier, it is completely useless when plundering cities because you can't really crack walls or cannons, uh, or not cannons, you can't crack uh, towers with this very effectively unless the city itself uh, has a tower that is really close to the coastline. A lot of towers will be situated up and above and kind of away from where you can just shotgun them down. And, uh, yes, it, with the perks that increase the range of Demi Cannon and with certain Demi Cannons that are meant for killing towers, you can kind of make it better. 
but it will never beat the Bombard Cannon, and it will never beat the Long Gun, and it'll never beat the Colvern, okay? So, uh, it, it's not an all-rounder weapon. It is a specialized weapon meant specifically to farm ships, and that's basically it. You can also shotgun, you know, fish out of the water, but you can also just blow them up with the Bombard Cannon. Uh, so, again, this is a level 2 ship, so it's gonna melt pretty much instantly. But if you had demi cans on the front and the sides, you would demi cannon here, and then you would swap over this way after ramming demi cannon there, and you basically win every 1v1 versus NPCs. So, demi cannon is amazing. You should definitely have them when you're doing farming. There's no, I mean, bombard is also great because it can AoE like multiple ships. It really depends on the location that you're farming. But, uh, like, this, this little, uh, foundry here has a tower. And the towers, well, it's uh, it's a little bit kind of further away. We can still kind of hit it there, and you can see that you know, look how much damage I did with one shot there. Maybe like five to ten percent, right? It's not a lot, and yeah, they're gonna start shooting me. But with a with a just a, a long gun, I deal even more. Okay, I'm dealing way more with the long gun, uh, and then with the bombard, I will deal even more, and it's easier to hit too. Also, I didn't. It auto plunders when you start attacking the towers, just in case you were wondering. So yeah, and uh, like the demi cannon is not meant for towers. It's not meant for walls. If there's a giant like fort wall and you get next to it, you're gonna die. Okay, so at the end of the game on the highest level forts, if you ride close to a <laughs> you know, a military fort, you're just gonna get nuked. And so there's no reason to ever be close, and there's no reason to ever use demi cannons when plundering actual military fortifications. Now, a little foundry like this in the, in the early game, if this is all you have, it'll work. But, again, there's no reason to use this other than ship farming. The next weapon I want to talk about is the Ballista. Now, unfortunately, I can't really show you how this works because in the beta, the ammo, to be able to buy the ammo and to be able to craft the ammo is locked behind progression, so you won't be able to really use this in the first, I don't know, three to five hours of playing unless they change things. But this weapon has, it, it's, uh, there's no cooldown to firing it. It is, um, it's just a really big, I'll try to show it off and just show you what it looks like here, but I can't really show you the damage. The damage is amazing, right? I think that at the end of the game, which I cannot confirm yet, but the rarest, most legendary ballista will be one of the best weapons in the game. So, the ballista is, it's a front-facing weapon right here, it's a really big, you know, it's one of those big siege weapons that you see in, like, the old military day, or the old medieval days, right? She gets a giant, you know, freaking arrow, and you charge it up, and then you release it, and there is no cooldown, there's no reloading time, it's just charge, fire, charge, fire, charge, fire, charge, fire. And it deals more damage than the long cannons, and with it, because there's no reload, it does higher DPS. You can also shoot these really, really far away. Like, I could, I would be able to hit this ship very easily. And uh, it deals the highest pierce damage in the game from what I have looked up and studied. And uh, just from, you know, looking at other content creators that had access to the in-game stuff. This is the weapon of weapons for sniping, essentially. But at the same time, because it is a sustained DPS weapon, that means that... Uh, and so instead of doing a big burst and, you know, like, trying to maneuver around, you just sit at the back outside of the range of these fortifications and you just nuke everything. But the, this ammo is the most expensive. It's also the hardest to get. It's You can't even get it in beta. The, the only way to get the ammo in beta is there is a quest reward that gives you 14 of them, and I've already shot through all of those. So, again, the Ballista, one of my favorite choices uh, for the front... My, my dream ship is the Ballista on the front and then the Bombards on the sides because that's just how the PvP meta is. That's just the most efficient and easiest and laziest way to play this game. Now, I want to talk about the second worst weapon in the game now. This is the Sea Fire. This is a basically a flamethrower. And it is, it is still useful in some regard. Maybe if you're like a ramming ship build, which I mean, I don't have access to the full game. So I don't know if ramming ship builds are even going to be a thing over just nuking people with bombards, but uh, the damage is not as high as you would think, and I have a special one that uh, you get from a PvP reward, so it does, it's gonna do more than anything else we can find in the beta. And uh, there is a few niche uses. Now this is a ship in distress, I'm just gonna burn them. And uh, <laughs> you can see the damage, it, it's okay. Like we're able to melt them, but I'm gonna tell you right now that the, uh, the ammo that we just used is ridiculous. 
Uh, let's see, we were at 402 ammo when we started spraying, and you have to let him pump oil into the barrel. And now we're at like 388. So, uh, again, this cannon, it can burn towers if they're near the coast, but it's not the, the best. I will share with you one of my favorite uses, though, and that is for killing the enemy's sails. In, like, group PvP, having one of these ram your ship and then burn your sails is a death sentence. Uh, I will say that. That is where it's mainly primarily used, but by burning the sails, you are massively limiting the damage that you deal. I don't have very exact specifics on how, how damage is calculated, but I think sail attacks are 25% uh, of, you know, attacking the body, whereas, you know, hitting the weak points is even more so. If we burn the sails, which I just killed him with ramming, <laughs> oops. Uh, okay, so that's a player. I can't hurt the player. Uh, also, we got a level 3 ship here. Let's turn around and uh, meet him. I lost all my food in a PvP match. I got, like, some Discord pre-made team just nuked me immediately. It was really sad. They all had the same clan tag, so... Let's not ram this one. Alright, so if we burn the sails, and you can see here, he's on fire, his sails are broken, he can't move. We could just mortar him if we wanted, if we weren't in melee range. But yeah, he's just gonna burn to death now. So, it is a good damage over time, but like, in this game, you want to pretty much instantly kill ships. You don't want to sit there and daunt them up like some sort of World of Warcraft Warlock MMORPG gameplay. No, you want to you wanna kill them immediately, because they can still shoot you while you're in melee flame range. And the bad thing about being in melee, I don't know why I'm calling it melee range, at close range, is that you can't brace in time to react to enemies shooting back at you. I mean, maybe you can if you have, like, insane response time. But, uh, yeah, this, like, okay, right now we have a full tank of gas. I'm going to burn this ship to the ground by attacking its weak points. We're gonna see how much ammo we expend doing this, okay? So, we're just gonna start burning. And yeah, that was ramming it. I'm gonna shoot the whole tank. Well, I shot most of the tank. But look how much ammo it cost, okay? We're, we were at 380. We gotta let them pump it into the gun. And 371. So that was nine oil barrels. Nine oil barrels to kill a level three ship. Well, as you can see, like, like oil barrels aren't the cheapest ammo. Yeah, you can craft them. They're crafted by, you know, the, the, the basic crap. But this weapon, this weapon sucks. The range sucks. It is, it's not good for sieges, for plundering. It's not good in PvP because everyone's just going to run away from you unless you break their sails. And even then, I, I can't find a, a use for this anywhere at any point in the game. And I have a stronger one than most people in the beta because I got a legendary, you know, uh, treasure reward. And yes, before anyone tries to argue about armor types and, oh, you need you need the, the, the weapon to counter their armor type. Like, this player here, his armor type is explosion resistance. So he's probably got 33% explosion resistance based on his level. So you'd be like, oh, you shouldn't use bombards on him. No, just because you're dealing 33% less damage, you're still AO AOE nuking him. You're still hitting from max distance with fast reload. You're going to still do more damage, even with 33% reduction, than the rinky dinky flamethrower, okay? Now, early game, if you follow the main story quest in about two and a half hours, or faster if you're really good, you can get Skurlock's Chasers. These are a long gun. These are the sniper weapon of the game. They are meant to shoot longer distances, and they just shoot cannonballs, you know, just straight up. Uh, really good for hitting the weak points, but in, in reality, the Skrlox Chasers are amazing because they are designed to deal bonus damage when you attack the enemy's mast. This is also really good for boss fights and PvP, so you deal 7,000 additional damage. This is additional, by the way, uh, after the Torn Sails effect is applied to a ship. So, uh, all you have to do from distance is shoot their sails, you'll break their mast, which roots them in place, and you'll deal a bonus 7,000 damage. Now, when you attack the the uh, the sails, you're only dealing 25% damage. But, because you're going to deal 7,000, well, that's like hitting two or three weak points worth of damage. And because you can shoot this from an insane range, and they can't run away, and they can't move, uh, it's just, it's dirty. It's dirty in PvE and PvP. Now, you deal 50% increased damage when hitting sails, but let me, let me explain how this works. So... Let's say, let's just theoretically say if you hit the body of a ship, you deal 1,000 damage. Well, when you hit the sails, you'll deal around 250 damage. These numbers are not exact. These are just what I've noticed as I've been playing. So, you don't deal 1,000 plus 50% minus 75%. You deal 250 damage 
and then you add 50% to that, which would be 125, meaning, meaning you deal 375 damage now with this perk. It's not the best, but hey, you're still better off attacking weak points with this weapon if you can, but once you've popped all the weak points, they take a little bit to, to come back. They don't, they're not just always available to explode, right? Especially in, uh, you know, like, like fighting bosses. You kill all their weak points, and then you have to wait for them to respawn their, their weak points. So in the meantime, you attack their mast, because you're going to deal that bonus 7,000 damage. And, uh, yeah, the, like, these just shoot a long range. I'm gonna go ahead and show them off now. So long guns shoot far, right? They shoot pretty dang far. Let's see how far they actually shoot. Let's just aim all the way up. And fire! So, it, it goes so far, it's out of render distance essentially. Um, I don't think that I can just hit a ship off screen, but I can definitely shoot this ship, and while we can't see the weak points from this far away, I know I can hit the mast, which is the biggest, easiest target on the ship, and I, I, did I miss that? I hate that there's like a big plume of smoke. Now, the bad thing about the long guns is the long reload. But yeah, you can see I'm hitting the mast. You can see here, there's the debuff. One more mast shot. This thing is dead. This will kill this ship. So, here we go, and boink, and, well, it, yeah, it died, okay. Now, the, the, the long guns excel at hurting towers. This is a tower. I'm pretty far from it. But, uh, you can see, yeah, I'm, I'm hitting the base of the tower. I need to aim up more. Now, what about close combat? These aren't really the guns you want to use close combat because of the long reload. But when you hit a weak point, you deal a huge chunk of damage, which, uh, there's a weak point there. Let's see if I can hit it. And, nope, I missed, okay. So, yeah, there we go. We hit the weak point there, 4,200-something damage. And then, uh, you know, we got another weak point here on the side. And because these things fire straight and quickly, once you're close, you can generally hit the weak points, which I'm failing to do. But for towers, you definitely want to aim for that weak point. That is the red part of the tower, which would be the top. And you can see it deals a, a respectable amount of damage. But because of the high reload speed, it is not outclassed by bombards. So, you're better off bombarding, you know, uh, fortifications. And yes, I didn't want to plunder. Can we not play a cutscene every time I want to do something in a video game? Please, thank you, devs. Alright, Starfield was notorious for this. Uh, but yeah, I don't really need to finish off the tower there. But yeah, that's the long gun. Have fun with it, it's pretty cool. Next up is an all-purpose weapon, the Cold Varum. This is a middle ground weapon. This is like the boring static default cannon. It's just... It's just cannons. It's just regular cannons with a regular cannon arc and regular range. And the thing with Colverns is they can fill any role. You know, fire Colverns, flood Colverns, tearing Colverns, siege Colverns. Like, they're just kind of an all arounder weapon. And here's the thing the Colvern is designed to have about the same DPS as everything else, assuming you land every shot. And they have a medium reload time. There, there's nothing really fun or special about them, and uh, they don't do an AOE attack, so that's why they do. Th that's why they don't win against the bombard cannon. But uh, I'll, I'll sail up next to a ship, and I'll show you the damage. Now, the Colverns that I have on this ship are from a legendary treasure map, so they are much stronger than anything you can get or craft currently in the beta. So these things are going to hit a little harder than than normal, but. Um, uh, as far as tearing Colverns go, they're not that great either. But uh, I, I have my guns on the back of the ship here, so we're just going to point our butt at the enemy. And uh, yeah, you can spam a ship down. You can see here, we dealt uh, a decent amount of damage to it, right? But we, we're waiting on that reload, and then there we go. We finished off that level 3 ship. Here's another level 3 ship, about the same one. And uh, oh, we got some ale. There we go. And uh, ale for the lads, boys! Uh, you can see that the, uh, the Demi Cannon, which we showed off earlier in the video, you know, is gonna deal the same amount of damage, but in a single shot with a faster reload, so... There we go, I just did- look at that, I dealt more damage than a full volley of Colverns, and I'm already reloaded for a second volley. So, <laughs> this guy's probably wondering why I'm bullying level 3 ships. Potatoes Wrath. That's a fun name. Uh, you know, uh, here's the long gun again that we showed earlier, hitting the, the mast, and, uh... <laughs> You can see that the Colvern, there's like no reason to use it over the other weapons. Like, you know, long gun, boom, I dealt plenty of damage. Bombard cannon, easy to hit, deals just as much damage. And it, again, when you shoot, this is this is the, the Colvern. You know, when you hit towers and walls and fortifications with this, it, it's the same as hitting them with the long gun. It's the same as hitting them with your bombard. It's just harder to land, you gotta get closer 
to land your shots, which you never want to do against the high-level military forts, ever. So I don't see a point or a reason to use the Colvern unless it's all you got or it's your strongest weapon that you just happen to find. So the mortar is, it's hard to classify the mortar. It is an auxiliary weapon. That means it is not the front or sides or back of the ship weapon. It is the weapon in the middle of your ship. And uh, the mortar has an, a very good range, a very large area of effect circle here. This is like, I guess, being like an AOE spellcaster in a video game, you know? But um, the great thing about the mortar is it's a good opening attack when you're plundering a base and there's like three ships all packed together just beelining it for you. You cast this in front of them and they all take damage. The damage is pretty dang good here and uh, it's a little awkward to time. So I fired this when the ship was at the base of the circle and now it's going to land. There we go, direct hit, kind of, sort of. And it, it deals good damage, right? It's just, it's got a, it's got a semi-long cooldown. It does, it's like three, hitting three bombards. That, that, the mortar is basically three bombards in one. Also, I didn't even click to harvest this, but I'm going to harvest it anyway. So the mortar, uh, it's, again, it's not something you can really specialize in, I guess. It's just something extra to use. It's good to throw out, especially in PvP, whenever you're throwing bombards and mortars out, you can just flood the enemy's screen with red damage circles, and they're going to panic and try to avoid it or they're gonna brace now again br like a tank is uh, like in pvp a tank is going to counter the mortar it's not something you want to bring in a pvp fight against tanks but um the other auxiliary weapon I, I can't really show but it's the rockets and no i'm not gonna change the top of my screen i'm just gonna talk about it real quick the rockets are just an insane close range dps it's like two mortars okay the rockets are two mortars but against a single target I mean, yeah, you could spread the damage out, but why would you want to do that, right? Uh, so, again, I, I love the mortar. Lots of people love the mortar. It's great for PvE, PvP. It is, it's your go-to auxiliary weapon for sure. Now, one of my favorite uses for the mortar, besides just shooting it at targets before initiating combat, because uh, it, it makes a great opening weapon, is that it lets you zoom out and look around. Like, you can really move the camera very far out, more so than the looking glass or... Or not the looking glass, but the crow's nest. It's it's so much better for it. If you're wondering what the crow's nest is used for, it's it's so you can look around without steering your ship, kind of, sort of. I mean, yeah, you can do that anyway, but, like, it lets you see over stuff. That's basically it. It's, uh, I don't know. It's just, I guess, more for roleplay purposes. Uh, but <laughs> whatever. The, again, the mortar, many, many uses. Now I want to talk about the worst weapon in the whole game, and that is torpedoes. Torpedoes are in a bad place right now. Torpedoes are not fun to use. They are not rewarding to use. They are the lowest DPS weapon. Even if you land every hit with your torpedoes as they arm, and you even have the special ones from legendary PvP treasure chests, they are absolutely terrible. So here's how the torpedoes work. This is the aiming reticule. And uh, the red is when the torpedoes are not armed, and the white is when they are armed, so that maximizes your damage. And, uh, like, if we fully volley this ship here, there we go. And yes, it, I did technically kind of, sort of, almost one-shot the ship, but not quite. Uh, and that's a level one ship, and these are, again, like, high-level torpedoes. And th that was three armed direct hits. That's, it, it's really hard to do. They have a, they have a longer reload time. Their range isn't as good as the long gun. Like, you see that ship in the distance there? We can actually, like, shoot some torpedoes at it. And, uh, yeah, we can just follow them here. And, uh, they suck in PvP. They, they, they're just terrible weapons. They, uh, look, they, they just blow up like that. They, their range sucks. It's hard to hit targets. And you can sit here and you can be like, oh, well, I'm gonna be the best torpedoes player ever, bro. You're wasting your damn time. Be the best bombard player ever. So, <laughs> again, this ship is still too far away to shoot with torpedoes. I could literally shoot it with bombards or even the long gun, but not torpedoes. No, no, no. And uh, yes, the bigger the ship, the easier it is to hit with torpedoes, but torpedoes have a bad habit of not hitting weak points on ships. Like, this ship is literally docked and not moving. Let's, uh, there we go. That should hit. But if it was moving, it's actually pretty hard to hit. Now, we did end up one-shotting that ship, so that's cool. But, um... We could one-shot it with many other things if we had, you know, good guns this level. So, we're in active combat with this one. And I have to shoot, I have to aim ahead of the ship here, kind of like that. So, by the time that they land, it, it's, it's tricky to aim. It lets us say that. It's tricky to aim. And uh, those are unarmed. Those were unarmed torpedoes. So, while we are, like, doing, let's try to hit this ship. Like, it's going to be a little awkward here. 
trying to, we gotta shoot like way ahead of this shit. But you can see it's just it's just weird. Like I'm gonna have to aim even further ahead to hit this guy. Like, am I even close? No. No, I'm not even close enough to for the <laughs> the torpedoes to land. Alright, those those kinda hit. And I have the explodey ones, so normally that wouldn't hit. Brace that. So, more torpedoes. And yeah, we're kinda hitting with it. Now I'm making this weapon look good. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm making this weapon look good. It does not feel good. It is awkward to hit. I think we just hit that one on accident, actually. So I'm getting pretty lucky here with my footage. This is not cherry picked, I swear. I don't cherry pick my stuff. But uh Torpedoes just are not the way to go, okay? Uh, also, for sieging forts, plundering, and uh, military encampments, because torpedoes swim along the water, you can't hit towers with this. You can't hit fortified walls with this. It, the explosions will splash up onto the shore and do some damage, but it's like a thousand? Like, <laughs> it should be dealing way more. Like, okay, wrong guns. Let's try to hit here. And, uh... I, they're cool. I will give them that. They're a pretty cool looking weapon and mechanic. But gameplay wise, okay, no ammo. I'm all out of torpedoes. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you go. That's the, that's the torpedoes, bros. So again, you're just better off using other weapons, man. Just <laughs> bombard them, dude. Just use the bombards. Also, you gotta swivel your camera around to grab the loot. So yeah, worst weapon, torpedoes for sure, 100%. Now, let's review all the weapons we've covered in today's video. We've co covered the Culverne, the Demi Cannon, that's the shotgun one. We've covered the Bombard, the best one on the list, in case you skip to the end. By the way, if you did skip to the end, I put the best stuff at the start of the video, so go check that out. Use the timestamps in the description. We covered the Long Gun, why it sucks, but there is a good one here you can get early on through the story. I've covered the Mortar. And I talked about the rockets. I can't get them in beta, but uh, rockets, they're a single-target APS weapon. They're all right. Uh, the Ballista, which I can't show off in the beta because there's only one quest that rewards the ammo. And we talked about Seafire, one of the worst weapons ever besides torpedoes. So that is all the weapons that are available in the beta and the, well, the weapon types, that is, at least. So hopefully you learned something. Let me know in the comments what your favorite weapon is. Let me know in the comments what your favorite sandwich is, okay? I just like... Uh, a club sandwich from Subway. I don't know, okay? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit that like button before you go. And bef one last thing. There's a video on the right side of your screen that you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, then you're going to have an embarrassing, awkward moment out in public in the next two days.